Here is a true story from Reddit. The link to the story is in the description below. Enjoy. This story took place no more than three years ago. I was with my then boyfriend from the UK. He had come to visit me and meet my family in beautiful Colombia. We hadn't seen each other for a while, so I decided to buy a couple of plane tickets and visit a place near my home that even I've never been to, and figured that we could explore it together. I chose this set of islands near the west coast and at least 10 hours away from my hometown. The plan was to get off the plane, take a cab to a small coastal town, and from there take a boat to the island. We made it to the small regional airport on time, grabbed our bags, and started asking around where we could take a cab that will take us to our next stop. We had found a cab service that drove us along with other people all crammed in a van. After a couple of hours, we made it to the small fishing town. After getting off the van, we noticed that the sun was setting and no boat will take us to the island at that time, so we decided to find a cheap hotel and sleep for the night. It was a little gross, but we didn't care. We were all about the island that waited ahead. On the next day, after a delicious yet humble breakfast, we took our bags to the port. We found a boat and it took us to the little island we wanted to go to. Our time on the island was lovely. The white sandy beaches were clean, since no more than 50 tourists were on the island, and most of them stayed locked inside a five-star hotel that we passed walking along the shore. After five magical days in this beautiful paradise, we headed back. The money was running low, and since I was the only one paying for almost everything on this trip, I was struggling to keep up. We made it back to the fishing town and still had one more day left. We searched for a nicer hotel this time, somewhere we could actually shower and relax. But we soon got bored and hot staying indoors, so we decided to go explore. This town was small in comparison to other Colombian cities or towns, but at the same time, quite overpopulated. More than 2,000 people lived here. The beaches in this town were not as nice as the islands. The sand was dark, the ocean waters were brown, green, and dirty since the amount of tourists visiting here was at an all-time high. We started asking around for a nicer beach. Many people said there was one called La Playa del Francis nearby. Apparently it was cleaner, solitary, and romantic. We didn't need to hear any more. We packed a simple bag with our phones, sunblock, water, towels, wallets, and the hotel key. The bag I was wearing is called a mochila, it's basically one big bowl of fabric with a strap sewn or cut on opposite sides and really no way to close it up. So imagine you're wearing a grocery bag, but the straps are just one and they're way longer. The sun was scorching and the sand was burning our feet through the flip-flops. I must admit, I was excited about exploring, but at the same time, many people warned us to be careful that there were a lot of robberies in this area. Sadly, this is an everyday thing in my country, so I didn't pay it any mind. This was a very poor town, so I wasn't concerned about how the people looked raggedy and dirty. But every time I saw a shifty guy or a group of guys, my heart would flutter, like having tiny little panic attacks, especially once the tourist area started fading out in the background. We kept walking along more empty beaches and noticed the sand getting cleaner. There was less trash and less people. Then we came across this group of guys, and they stopped as they saw us and just stared. I tried to remain calm and look like I wasn't scared out of my mind. I asked with confidence in my voice, Excuse me, do you know how far La Playa del Francis is from here? One of them scoffed. You are way far from there. Maybe you should take a cab or a motorcycle. We didn't want to spend any more money. I had already started using my card since I was out of cash. I just looked at him and said, Okay, thanks. We'll just keep walking. We uncomfortably waved and kept walking, but we noticed that as soon as we left, they did too. They were talking between themselves, but it wasn't possible to hear what they were saying as they were walking a ways down the road from us. We kept walking along the beach, and I saw the port in the distance. That area of the beach was closed, so we were forced to take a dirt road parallel to the beach. 
What we didn't know was the road passed right through the slums. What I hadn't mentioned was, back then, my boyfriend was a very cheap guy. We started fighting once I figured we were really far, and he didn't want to chip in for a cab ride. I got really upset and said, You know what? Screw it. I have covered every expense on this trip and I'm fed up with it. We're heading back. To which he quickly replied, I already spent my money as well. The arguing continued back and forth. The fight got a little heated from then on, partly because of the intense heat and partly because my feet hurt. I started walking in front, getting farther and farther away from him. We were already headed back in the direction of the beach where we had come from. When up ahead, I saw this young scrawny guy standing next to a bush at a corner we had to turn. I paid him no mind as I was upset and focused on fighting with my cheap ass boyfriend. As we got closer, I noticed the guy was intently staring at us. I thought it was because we looked exotic. A very white, blue-eyed foreigner walking with a long-haired, dark-skinned Colombian. I was about to mutter a weak, good afternoon, but the words died in my mouth as the guy quickly stepped forward and jumped me. His movements were fast and only caught glimpses of what was happening. There was a second guy hidden behind the first one and he went straight for my boyfriend. The first guy tried to grab my bag as he pulled out this huge knife from behind his back. I fell on the ground, but it didn't knock the wind out of me. I was too concerned about keeping my hands around my bag, holding it tight against my chest. Thoughts raced through my head like, what was my boyfriend doing? The guy kept trying to pull the bag from underneath me as I cried, no, please, no. He said, let go or I'll cut you, bitch. I was rolling around on the ground, tightly hugging the bag. I saw the knife again. This time it went under me, and he cut the strap and grabbed onto the bag. I jumped to my feet. He was getting on a bicycle as the second guy was blocking my boyfriend. I was furious with my stupid, idiotic boyfriend, because he just stood behind the other guy who wasn't even holding him. It was like he was trapped in some invisible box or something. The second guy had turned to see his friend getting on his bike and he rushed to do the same. I kept fighting for my bag with the first guy. I wanted to fight for my phone. It's hard to obtain such expensive items in Colombia. I really worked hard for the past couple of years to get a brand new one and I wasn't going to give it up so easily. I was powered by pure hatred. I hated these two men. I hated the country and I hated the government. I hated the fact that society's conditions had created such violence, such poverty and deprivation. I was sick of it all, and I wanted to bash their heads in. The first guy broke free with my bag and they quickly took off on their bikes into the slums. I took off running and screaming behind them as my flip-flops flew through the air. Like I just said, I was fueled by hatred then, and I ran like I have never ran before. Some people came outside and some just stood in their doorways when they heard the screaming and commotion entering their neighborhood. I screamed, stop them, they just robbed us, help, help. I never thought I would say such a silly word. Believe me, in Colombia, people prefer to be robbed and head home feeling defeated afterwards than beg for help. This time I was determined. I was tired of being a pushover for lousy crooks that were half my age. I gave in my all. I ran like I was being chased by Jason Voorhees. I ran and screamed for a couple of blocks and many people started screaming and pointing at them as well, but no one did anything. Soon enough, they were gaining more and more terrain on me, then turned around one of the corners down the road. I continued running and saw them turn another corner. By then, they were too far and I couldn't follow anymore. I was heartbroken. I stopped running and I threw myself on the ground and started pounding on the dirt road crying, screaming hysterically. I couldn't believe they robbed me so easily, in such a stupid way. How could I explain this to my parents? How would I even call them? People started gathering around me and my idiot boyfriend arrived a few seconds later, jogging slowly, trying to comfort me but I just wasn't having it. I cried as people asked me, what did they take? What did you have in your bag? I cried, our phones and our wallets. I realized phone robbery is so common that no one would care. So I decided to lie a little. And our passports. 
He's from England. Now how is he supposed to get home? They all started murmuring, and then a huge, luxurious truck appeared at the end of the road. A very heavy woman yelled, They took their passports! There's the mayor! There's the mayor! Some other lady asked, Anyone know who it was? Then I heard another voice saying, It was Miss Rosario's son. I saw him. The sounds were now getting confusing. There were at least 20 people around me trying to comfort me and ask questions. The truck slowly rolled closer and the heavy lady pretty much jumped in front of it. She was screaming, They took their passports! That's why we can't get enough tourists here from other places! Then more and more people started complaining to the mayor. I slowly stood up and looked at the man behind the wheel. He was a very heavy fellow, shaved head, no facial hair, and had a stern look on his face. He said nothing. There was a passenger next to him and he did all the talking. He asked where we were staying at, what they took, and who was it. I told him I didn't know who they were. The heavy lady said, It's Miss Rosario's son, the one from the slums. The mayor remained quiet, staring blankly. The passenger then said to a couple of guys standing in the back, Take them back to their hotel. He then looked at me, We will let you know if we find anything. After that, they left. The other two guys took us back to the hotel on the back of their dirt bikes. I felt defeated and weak. When we got back to the hotel, we explained to the front desk what had happened. The owner, an elderly gentleman, walked us back muttering encouraging words and unlocked the room for us. I threw myself on the bed and cried. My feet were bleeding and my head felt like exploding. My idiot ex tried to console me, but I just scoffed and told him to let me be. I had to make phone calls now, cancel my cards, my national ID document, all of that complicated stuff. A few hours passed and I had calmed down and took a shower. I was thinking what was I going to do next. Then I heard a dirt bike. After that, a call came up to our room. The gentleman at the front desk told us there was someone looking for the gringo couple. We went outside. It was the heavy lady riding a beaten up dirt bike and she was upset. She was saying that she hated when things like this happen. That the mayor needed to step up and make the town safe for tourists because that was their whole life's income right there, selling snacks, knickknacks, or beer to the tourists on the beach. We then saw the mayor's truck coming down the road, and the heavy woman told me, when he comes closer, we'll demand that he does something, or I'll do it myself. The truck came closer, and when the window rolled down, I saw that stern look on the dark face again. He said nothing. The passenger spoke up. We found a bag, but it didn't have any passports in it. He lifted up my mangled bag, but even that didn't excite me. I muttered something like, Oh yeah, we checked and the passports were actually in the room. Thank God. He gave me a weird look and said, This is all we could recover. Sorry about that, but people should really have warned you before you entered the slums. I meekly took the bag and it felt way lighter. I was not optimistic at this point. I muttered a quick, Thanks. As the heavy lady kept talking about how this could never happen again, this is their town and they need the tourists to come and visit and blah, blah, blah. I just held the bag against my stomach, as if its warmth would make me stop feeling the emptiness inside. But it didn't. I opened the bag to see what was left. I saw, at the bottom of my bag, my phone with no case, just the phone. My cards and documents, no wallet of course. And the room key. I felt like screaming out of joy. I took out my phone and it was on plain mode which made me assume they tried to unlock it and couldn't since it had a passcode. I couldn't believe my luck. Up until this day, I still don't believe I got my phone back. It's so unlikely. It's like finding a green sapphire. The gentleman from the front desk came towards me and said, They were probably watching your every move, ever since you made it back from the islands. Be careful in the future, would you, sweetheart? To that I replied, Yes, sir, will do. I can't believe my screaming, crying, lying in hysteria had worked to an advantage. My then boyfriend and I left the next morning. We didn't last long after that trip though. He just wasn't strong enough for me. I was already feeling invincible. I was a badass. And I wasn't going to be scared ever again. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time.